The idea that the greenhouse effect could be influenced by human activities appeared uh, in the early 20th century. Svart Arrhenius, a Swedish researcher, said that uh, coal combustion released uh, huge quantities of CO2 and that this was going to lead to uh, an increase in temperatures at the end of the 21st century. He also said that the greenhouse effect had an impact on glacial and interglacial cycles. In the beginning of the 20th century, Keening created the first uh, observatory networks in Hawaii. He performed direct me measurements of uh, CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. Then in the 70s, methane and nitrous oxide were measured. We now have a very good picture of the evolution of uh, greenhouse effect gases in the atmosphere due to human activities. Now, let's just look at the past, because the past provides also useful information regarding the relationship between greenhouse effect gases and the climate. The past shows uh, recent uh, data which allows us to reconstitute the climate over the last thousand years. Historic archives, uh, uh, coral reefs or uh, tree rings, uh, the an analysis of corals, and also we can use uh, marine sediments, stalagmites uh, on the continent, and ice in the polar areas. And ice from the Atlantic ice cap. Here we have a core harvested in the Epica project in the Atlantic. The ice gives us data over 800,000 years, three kilometer deep drilling cores have allowed us to reconstitute parameters. We have a huge data quantity, the ice will tell us about the temperature, because the ice is made of isotopes, uh, heavy deuterium isotope uh, from hydrogen or the isotope uh, from oxygen uh, 16, which is oxygen 18, and the temperature decreases uh, as we go towards the polar areas. Every time that rain is condensed or snow is con rain is condensing to snow and ice, the uh, precipitations are richer with uh, oxygen 18 and deuter deuterium than vapor, and uh, therefore the vapor is poorer when we go towards the equatorial area from the equatorial areas towards the poles, which means that we can uh, reconstitute the past climates by analyzing the ice. We can also extract water, air bubbles, uh, which provides access to a number of uh, measurements on greenhouse effect gases, such as methane, uh, nitrous oxide, and, of course, CO2. Dust, sea salt, beryllium are also present, and beryllium is influenced by the solar activity. Therefore, we can inquire data on the solar activity by analyzing ice. We can also find out about pollution in the trivial sense and all the volcanic events which are recorded in ice. So ice provides a vast quantity of data, the only data that allow us to compare the climate with the greenhouse effect. In the EPICA drilling, we achieved the first work in the 80s, the Vostok Antarctic drilling, which brought us back to a climatic cycle in the 80s and then back to the, to the year 400,000 before our era in the 90s. We went back in time thanks to this uh, drilling at, at the Dome Sea over eight climatic cycles. From the right to the left, we go back in time from zero to 800,000 years. The red curve in the middle shows the temperature evolution in the site, drilling site at the heart of the Antarctic, Antarctic with an alternance of uh, glacial periods, relatively long glacial periods, and shorter interglacial periods, which are shorter and warmer. We're in an interglacial period in since 10,000 years, and the previous uh, glacial period was between 125 and 100,000, 30,000 years. We reconstitute the temperatures and the glacial temperature in the Arctic uh, is 10 degrees lower than uh, it used to be. 
Also, another climatic indication is the seawater level being measured with the marine sediments. And during glacial periods, the uh, sea level is 120 meters lower than it is currently. So, glacial period and seawater level are also correlated. There are variations which happen at the same time. But more interestingly, we can look at the uh, CO2 registrations showing high CO2 levels during the interglacial warm periods and much lower, about 180 ppm during glacial areas and 280 ppm during the warm interglacial periods. We can also show that we are currently in, in, in experiencing an exceptional period, 400 ppm of CO2 Therefore, a 40% increase in the quantity of uh, CO2 contained in the atmosphere over the last 200 years. And this kind of recording allows us to say that the values we are reaching today have never ever been reached during the last 800,000 years. So we can establish the link between gases and greenhouse effect. And this is very important so that we can understand the role of the greenhouse effect in the climatic warming phenomenon. But the greenhouse effect at the same time does not control the alternance between the glacial periods and the interglacial periods. The timekeeper is really the top curve. The variations are due to to an evolution in the position of the Earth on the orbit. 130,000 years ago, there was a lot of sun in the summer, and this is the reason why we have uh, an alternance between uh, alternating between glacial periods and interglacial periods. Another example comes from Greenland, information which is directly relevant for future climate. In the 90s, in the polar ice and in marine sediments and also uh, stalagmites and all kinds of continental recordings, very quick climate uh, evolutions were recorded on the uh, time scale of a human life. We see very quick temperature evolutions and also very quick evolution in the uh, methane dust uh, concentration or rain due to uh, changes in the Atlantic, uh, North Atlantic Oceanic uh, circulation. And we see that these recordings are extremely rich, both in Greenland and in the Antarctic area. And if you're interested by the climate changes, you should look into this kind of information, look back to the past, because there is continuity between the past climate, today's climate, and the climate of the future. And if we want to understand the climate of the future, this can only be achieved with models, but in order to understand the mechanisms, we really have to understand the data from the past in order to understand the connection between the climate and the greenhouse effect and the existence of quick climatic variations, which could not have been shown if we had not looked at the polar ice cores and the paleoclimatic data.